Hello and welcome to The Widow's Oil. This is part three of a series that I'm doing where we are um, investigating to find out more about uh, Revelation 20 and specifically what it means when it says fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured the enemies, those that had gone up to battle against God's people. So we want to um, have a look at all the possible meanings of fire. And in uh, part one and two, I did quite an extensive study, but now I want to look at it from a different viewpoint just to glean more understanding. In Luke 9, from verse 51 to verse 56, we get a, a part that says a Samaritan village rejects the Savior. And it says there, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So this is very interesting because it gives us another type of look of the fire coming down from heaven. What the disciples were referring to is here yeah, in one um, in one Kings, one Kings eighteen, the battle of the prophets um, of Baal with Elijah on Mount Carmel, where the Lord. Um, made fire come down and consume the sacrifice and then he showed the children of Israel very clearly that who is God. So the prophets of Baal were unable to make fire come down from heaven. It was Elijah that was able to do that because God, it was God, uh, God that did it. Um, and then Elijah actually slayed all these false prophets. So this is what they are referring to when they say, should they do that? Should they make fire come down from heaven? But Jesus then said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. You see, and that's why I am saying we need to see Jesus as in the, we mustn't, be, think carnally because then we are also going to be of this wrong spirit um, which is a persecuting spirit because basically what the James and John wanted to do yeah was to to persecute these people for their beliefs if you think about it that was what was in their mind and Jesus rebuked them because that is not what he wanted you see um, we cannot live like in the Old Testament and think we must do those things because we do not even understand all the things. These are workings of God that we do not understand. And we as humans cannot begin to understand and we do not really understand good and evil enough for us to make decisions like this. That is why Jesus said um, that my kingdom is not from here and therefore my servants do not fight. And that's why I am warning people that want to make physical war on earth, that Jesus would say the same to you. You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. You see, because this is exactly how persecution starts. It starts with people who really are zealous for the Lord and then they um, think that this is the right thing to do. So making fire come down from heaven to consume people, to destroy them, in other words, is exactly yeah, what uh, we see 
in uh, Revelation 13, with the beast of the earth, he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Then you see here also that he, he sets up an image and everybody must bow down to this image. And he, he has the, also the mark. So all of this, this image and the mark all have to do to enforce conformity. Yeah, it's conformity in, in the economic market, but it can actually be extrapolated to think of religious conformity as well, you see. So that means religious persecution. So this is another way to see what the fire of heaven could entail. It, it, it's um, not that I'm saying anything different from what I said in video one or two, but what I'm saying is another possibility is that the thing that destroys the um, enemies of God is that religious persecution starts and that they actually destroy each other, you see. So it would not be different from saying that fire refers to doctrine because when they use God's truth to persecute, that can also destroy. So it's another way to perhaps see this and um, what is this fire that comes down from heaven. It could be the conformity that the beast of the earth brings upon the earth and then cause people to be killed. Everybody that would not worship the image of the beast, that image I think would be the Antichrist. Um, so just like Jesus is the image of the Father, the Antichrist also sets up an image or the false prophet, and that image is the Antichrist. So it's another image that the people worship, and then they set up an earthly system of um, buying and selling, which requires conformity. Everybody must conform to the system, but it also involves a set of beliefs, be it humanism or some other religion. So this gives us another way to see that the fire that devours them could be um, religious and political persecution, which they bring upon themselves because of twisting God's word or um, because of adding or taking away from God's word. Because in the book of Revelation, we get a warning if men leave out or add to God's word, it leads to destruction. We also saw in part two of the study that when doctrine gets twisted, it leads to destruction. So that is another interesting way to see this fire as being the fires of religious and political persecution, which arise due to men um, becoming sinful and setting up abominations, which lead to desolation.